aboard the Lancia Fulvia 1600 HF, also known as the Fanalone. Fanalone means uh, like big lights because the inner headlights on the rally version of this car, which this is, um, are bigger. Uh, and so in Italian, it's called the Fanalone. And that distinguishes the one that you want uh, as the sort of the good rally car. Uh, this car, in general terms, uh, was available in a bunch of different configurations. Uh, you could have as a sedan or a coupe or a different coupe designed by Zagato. Uh, and I think there was another variant, but I might be forgetting it. In any case, it is the brainchild of Professore Antonio Fessia, uh, who was basically the technical director at Lancia starting in the late 50s. Uh, and he is responsible for some of the coolest shit that Lancia has ever done. Uh, and this is one of those cars. It is actually the second car that really represents the philosophy that he uh, championed, which was this front wheel drive uh, concept uh, in a relatively sort of medium sized car. Uh, and it's, it's sort of representative of Lancia from this era, era with the sort of high quality and beautifully made and thoughtfully engineered aspects of it and it employs a V4 uh, which was actually a, a launcher tradition at this point having started before you know the 1920s I think it was uh, in any case this car was one of the most successful rally cars of its era uh, and it was sort of campaign starting probably relatively early from when it first came out I think they started with Flavia's which is this, this contemporary big brother of this car uh, but this car being smaller was a more effective rally car uh, and so it began competing in the mid-60s, uh, and it reached its fully developed form uh, around about probably 1970 or so. Uh, and during this era, it was sort of uh, the very, very beginning of World Rally, and it actually never won World Rally because it didn't exist yet, but this, these cars were incredibly successful uh, at competing, and we are driving in France, and there's a truck, so that's fun. Let's try first. First gear, great. Oh yeah, makes noise. Sounds like a bunch of angry bees. about this car is that it was successful because the, the uh, driven wheels are um, where the motor is also. So you put the motor on top of the driving wheels, which gives you good traction. And so this is a front wheel drive car. Uh, I think it doesn't look like a front wheel drive car. Most people don't know it's a front wheel drive car. And when you drive it, you definitely notice that it's a front wheel drive car, but in a really pleasant way, maybe even charming, if I will be allowed to use that word again. Uh, because I think a lot of things are charming. I think this car is very charming. Uh, in any case, uh, so under power, very neutral handling. It doesn't understeer. It's not like an understeering mess, which is what you usually associate with, um, with front-wheel drive cars. Uh, and this car rotates really nicely, and it's fairly light, and I think these cars were tuned to be very agile for rally purposes. And so you don't have a really strong sense of understeer in this car. Uh, what you do get though, it's not torque steer, but under power the steering becomes very heavy uh, and that is a sort of very front wheel drivey. But it, it's, it's neat because it's sort of a type of, of feel that you get. Let's try for steer. Uh, steering feel effectively. You get, the car is communicating to you through the steering what's happening when you're under heavy power. forgive this car. Actually, don't forgive this car. It's kind of a great attribute. It's kind of noisy because it has 45 millimeter Delordos on it. In spite of that, it's fairly tractable. Uh, plenty of power at the top end, though. I would say that it doesn't have a great deal of torque down low. Uh, but it's overall a pretty streetable car for being a sort of converted race car. And uh, that's not always the case, especially with small displacement uh, motors that have been tuned for racing purposes.
Bar was immensely successful at rallying in an era where rallying was kind of a fringe activity. It wasn't this sort of mainstream, uh, really publicized with the helicopters and everything the way it is now. It was like a bunch of strange guys going out in the countryside and hauling ass for three days. Uh, and this car was really successful even though it was never designed for that purpose. Uh, and that is a testament probably to the intrinsic goodness of the design of Antonio Fessia, who was you know, perhaps seen to be kind of unconventional. I mean, this car always had a kind of unconventional uh, technical specification, but it ended up being incredibly well suited to to uh, rally driving, to competition driving. Uh, and nowadays, you experience it and you think, well, the performance is not objectively that impressive, but of course no old car's performance is. Uh, but what you get is an immense amount of um, stimulation and excitement and communication from the car. It's very involving. It requires a lot of technique to properly drive, but not so much that it becomes problematic. And that is kind of the sweet spot for this car. It is well... I'm going into one of the many famous tunnels in Monaco. Um, it's a car that, that is just difficult enough to drive. It's difficult enough that it, it challenges you and asks something from you, and if you rise to the occasion, then it's really a great experience that you get in exchange for the effort you put in. Uh, and the, my favorite cars, personally, are cars like that, where you can't just jump in and be brilliant. I think that some cars are like that, and that makes you feel very good in the short term, uh, but the cars where you have to work for it and put in a little bit of effort and invest something, to me, are the ones that I most enjoy. And so. I think that these cars generally, I mean, the competition versions are expensive, uh, but Fulvia's generally, I think, are really underrated and underpriced for what they are, but, you know, it's a fringe car and always will be a fringe car, which is something of a shame because, to me, this is a car that I would, I would own one of these enthusiastically and a 2002 I have no desire to own, for example, a BMW 2002. And maybe even over a GTB6 I'm, or a GTB, I'm not that interested in GTB ownership, whereas I'm very enthusiastic about this car, but it's a sort of move that you make after you drive a bunch of other stuff and in that sense it's consistent with other launches. It's a, it's a the typical launcha thing where you drive all the other stuff and then you know what that's like and then you try a launcha and you're like, oh, this is different, this is better and I, I get why that is. If you are cut from some sort of weird cloth, which, you know, I sort of am. And so that's why I really like these cars. In addition to the just immense success and the, the role that they played in the development of, of Rally, uh, which, which sort of originated Lancia's Rally Dynasty, which then of course went on with the Stratos, which was an absolute world beater, and then of course the 037, also a Rally world beater, then the Delta S4 and the Integrale. And so it really originated Lancia's intimate role with, with Rally in a way that is, we still think about today. I mean, everyone always says, make Lancia great again. And I think that this car started that greatness that we really associate with, with Lancia. Thank you.